stop hitting down at the golf ball. It's a mistake and it's hurting so many of you with your golf shots from the ground. If you want to fix your strike, this is the feeling you're going to need. So let's establish that when you hit your golf shots, you want your club with an iron hitting down at the ball. So passing down, touching the ground, hitting the ball, then the ground is the feeling. It's not exactly how it happens, but you want the club passing down. With an iron shot, I want you de-loft in the iron as well, which will require some amount of handle lean. These things all apply to these tips, even though lots of people get mixed up and think that they don't, which we'll show you. So the problems with trying to hit down at the golf ball, actually trying to push that club down into the ground, is that golfers tend to bury the club. They just slam it down into the ground. They're not using the relationship between each ends of the club very well to help them actually get in a, a low point, which is A, ahead of the ball, so you get that feeling of ball and turf first, and B, that interacts with the ground in a nice way, you know, where you get like a, a, a kind of shallowish divot, not just some big chunky thing, or even just slam it into the ground before the ball. I then see people trying to hit down at the ball by literally pulling that handle down, so they're trying to pull the club down because they want to hit down. And what actually happens, the more they pull the handle down, the more the head stays up. And what happens if the head stays up for too long is there's going to be a crash. At some point, it's going to have to come down or you're going to miss it. So all these ideas I'm going to deliver to you today are built around what I see from students. Now, if you're watching this and you're not this student, that's fine. Just watch it for fun or go and watch another video. But this is based on what students are doing day in, day out. I see them doing these folds. Let's try and give you some thoughts to get you to stop doing them. So let's give you some feelings that are gonna help you fix your iron strikes in a way where A, you get control of the handle in relationship to the head. And I mean that in how much you push the handle down or pull the handle up, which we'll come to. But I also mean how much when you get to the top, do you stand the handle up, in turn, standing the club up compared to what you call laying it down to let that club out come out in front of you. Getting golfers to have a strong relationship between this end and this end is huge for helping them control low point, strike, club path, and face direction. So many golfers can't link the two up. They have a disassociation. It's all about this end, or they can only feel this end and have no idea what this end is doing. Having the relationship between these two ends is just gonna be massive for helping you hit better shots. So with so many golfers who feel that they need to hit down with their irons, which they do, but trying to hit down, pulling on that handle and standing that club up, what happens is the more I pull the handle down, A, it stands the club up, which is not so good for club pass, as we've said, but also the more I pull that handle down into the ball, the more I try and just get it going down, is the club never goes down. It just stays up. It wants to stay up behind the head. At some point, that head has to start going down below the hands, and what happens is the hands and the grip end then needs to start coming up and back around towards you. So we need to get the feeling of this release working better, and yes, we're still going to keep handle lean in there but uh, the first port of call is as you start that downswing pulling on that handle hard trying to stand that club up or pull that club down which stands that club up is just so destructive for crashing the club into the ground so simple tip i use this with students and it just gives them a feeling you can use it at home or on the course what i want you to do is just make your normal backswing just go up to the top of the backswing and stop now what i want you to do from here is just take your trail hand off and you've got to stay here in your positions for maybe five, six seconds until your body starts to kind of shake a bit, like your body wants to give up, it wants to come down. What people do is, when I do this drill, is they do go up and then they kind of stand and relax and think they can stay there forever. You've got to stay in your tilts, keep your twists, try and keep it as realistic to your backswing. Take the trail hand off. Now from here, when you start getting that little shake, when your body's like going, uh, I'm starting to ache now, what I want you to do is just let the club go. So feel the head weight compared to the grip. Just let that club go a few inches. It starts laying down, dropping behind me. It starts coming down. Then trail hand back on and then just grab on and swing that club out in front of you. Because what it's doing is it's giving you that feeling of letting that club lay down before then reconnecting with it to try and pull it up and through, up and through pull it down hard and crash. And the trick is making that backswing as realistic as possible to get the feeling of a blend of a real one. Also do a few bad ones, so up to the top and then from here, what I want you to do is just try and stack this end on top of that end, so stack them up, reconnect and feel how different that feels for path 
and for interactions with the ground. That little lay down of the shaft is going to allow us to get much better connections with the ground, not crash, and hopefully start getting the second relationship with the handle working for you. Now, I think that what I'm talking about in this video will apply to your driver as well, but there's nuances, there's differences that make them work with an upward angle of attack compared to a downward. So they're very similar, but not quite the same. So a lot of parallels, but if you want to find out what we do with a driver, I've got more on that. We'll come to that. So now we've got that feeling of the shaft slightly laying down, which is going to allow us to get that club swinging out to that ball and hopefully get that head coming down, getting below the hands, level to below the hands, to so then pull the hands up to send the club down. The next thing we need to do is get rid of this desire to really kind of hit down with your hands and with the club, just to bury this club and handle down. Uh, and the easiest way of explaining this, because this does make people get a little bit kind of flipped. They, and flips the right time they, what we're about to do, people say, oh, but you're flipping at it. We're not. And then they're gonna say, people will go, well, but you're adding loft, you're meant to be de-lofting. It's not, which hopefully I'll demonstrate. Um, when you hit the ball, your hands are gonna get to their lowest point around kind of right thigh. And then from here, what's gonna put that club on the ground is this is gonna come up towards me. See that? Handle comes up club comes down and also the handle's coming up and towards me throwing that club out to the ball stay with me what i see so many amateurs do is just holding on to that club for so long almost driving it down the line they're trying to hit the ball or trying to drive it low here because their pressures are not in the right place they're driving it driving it here then they try to get out of the crash but that's when we're getting way behind the ball and we've got a drill coming for some pressure shifts as well which you're going to need in this video which i'm going to show you which will be the third point so what i want you to do is simply stand over the ball and i want you just to hold on to the metal of the club with it opposite your right thigh here and you're going to try and get this club coming up and towards you so from this position it's downswing the handle's going to start coming up and towards you throwing that club out and down this is the move that's absolutely going to transform your ability to strike and what you're going to feel subject to what part your brain latches onto so if you're a head thinker or if you're a handle thinker bearing in mind you're holding the handle part of me is thinking about going up and around to hit down hence the stop hitting down hitting down for so many golfers because so many of them are handle thinkers they're just pulling this down and crashing so actually trying to feel like they're pulling up with the handle to get the club out and down in front of them is where the strikes become super, super crisp. They become more shallow hit down. So it doesn't mean, what I mean by that is they still hit, let's say four down, rather than hitting, I don't know, eight down or two up because they hit down back here through their pressure shifts, they're fat and come up. But what happens is they're down is x degrees so think of a launch monitor is measuring the club coming down and how much it's doing what launch monitors don't do or some do the one i use doesn't doesn't tell you how far off the ground the club is or not so hitting four down but hitting like an inch below the ball four down is where the crashes come from and that is so much to do with that relationship to that end so this drill again at home is fantastic for getting that feeling of that club going down getting the feeling of you moving up also as you do this feel how easy it is if you so if I don't stay in my lead leg, if I don't bury down here and push everything down, it, it makes less sense. If I want to get this coming up and around, which you do, what I do is I start straightening up my left leg, look, which starts really feeling like that handle's going to come up. It feels like my lead hand's coming up as my trail hand goes down. There's a kind of release, a, a change of position of these two hands, which is what we're not seeing from amateur golfers you know even if you're casting it don't think lag even if they're casting it and you see these impacts we're still seeing the handle low and the head up for a long time I suppose the good players really starting to get that club out a bit earlier and bang into that strike get the handle coming up and around get your left side coming up and around to assist this feeling of getting that club down so you feel like you're going up to send the club down and that shallower interaction with the ground. So we've got the handle laying down. We've got the handle now kind of pull up and around you to get that strike nice and pure. These ideas alone, if work well, can help lots of people strike the ball way, way better, ball than ground. You can see I'm still taking a diver. It's a nice launch of that shot. You know, it's a nice forward flight. I've still got handle lean. See the handle lean, I'm still de-lofting. I'm still pulling this up as the club comes down. We're not 
doing this. You can even do a drill. I'll do one with split hands where you feel like you let that club go. Remember that's still got handle lead in it. It's just letting it go rather than pulling it down this way. These tips alone, honestly, for so many golfers, are gonna transform their hip. But look what's happened here. My ball was here, so I've gone interacting with the ground about here. I started cutting the grass, got the ball. Low point is ahead here, hence the divot is forward. Those ideas we've just given you will allow that to happen, but not for everyone, because they're not getting their pressures quite working correctly as well. So let's give you a drill here now that will allow you to try and make sure that when you're hitting the ball, you've got pressure in that lead foot or coming out of it. So as in, you've already bumped across to then try and get out of that lead side. So we're not talking about trying to stay back here, which lots of people do, most common issue we see with golfers is they just tend to, well, they start their backswing and put pressures here, then they shift way onto this side, stay and turn and pull on the handle. But let's get that pressure shifting. So simple, take your ordinary stance, I'm just gonna do it to the side of the ball here, but make it a fraction narrower with the lead foot, just a fraction. Keep the ball position in relationship, say it is in the middle of your body. And then what I want you to do is as you make your backswing, when your hands get around shoulder height, so as you're finishing your backswing, I want you, as you finish the end of your turn and your arm swing, to just step that back to the normal height, uh, width of your start. See what I did there? And it's that timing. I don't want you to go to the top of your backswing and do it. I want you to go half or well, three quarters of the way up, just past, so hands around shoulders, and then as they get there, you want this feeling of your backswing finishing as your downswing starts but from down there in the ground. This is gonna get your pressure recentering. This is gonna get you with the intent to try, or the intent to try and go through, get onto that lead side to then push up and out of it. Think about it, these ideas are scary if you're back there, meaning if I've moved my pressure's lead foot and then this way, and now I try and get up, push off lead foot, I try and get handle coming up and around me. I mean, I'm bottoming out back here, which I understand why lots of people think this doesn't make sense. They're gonna feel like they're gonna do that. You're not, as long as we get that bump to be able to get out a lead side and up and around the corner when you come through. And this drill's fantastic. Just normal stance, fraction narrow with the lead foot, like an inch or two, and then try and get the timings of blurring the lines between when your backswing ends. Believe it or not, in real golf instruction, so I don't mean YouTube tips just trying to get you to click, I mean what real instructors are talking about and trying to understand, which is what moves instruction on. Trying to know where the top of the backswing, you've got, I mean, in lots of discussions, establishing where the backswing finishes and the downswing starts has to be established before the conversation kicks off because it's blurry. The best players in the world are mixing those two into almost one move. And this is what I need you starting to do. Not having a backswing, then employing a downswing fork. We need a downswing fork with one half starting before the other half is finished. Blurring those lines it takes a little bit of coordination, but you'll be amazed how much it makes you really want to then push up and out of lead side to get that club up and out for those better strikes. This is huge for fixing irons, but remember you wanna hit better drivers as well, don't we? And guess what, hitting better drivers, you're still gonna need the lay the club down, you're still gonna to need to try and get the handle up and around. The ball position changes, some shapes in your body change. And if you wanna find how, how to make the driver really work with these ideas, check this video out, it's got all the answers you're gonna need.